If you've ever noticed your kids, or let's be honest, even yourself, making a decision because of what other people thought or wanting to make sure they were accepted by peers, then you're going to love this week. We're gonna be talking about First Samuel in Come Follow Me and the lessons that we learn from Saul and also from David and Goliath about what happens when we choose to follow the opinions of others versus the opinions of the Lord and what we can do to strengthen ourselves. I'm also going to be sharing a fun game that you can do to teach your kids, to help them learn by doing the importance of following the commandments of the Lord over the opinions of everyone around. Hi, I'm Jamie Knapp and welcome to the channel where quick insights and tips make raising kids in the gospel so much easier and a lot more fun. Today, we're going to be talking about the stories of Saul and also of David and Goliath. Now, we start in 1 Samuel in chapter 8. In 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 5, the people say to Samuel, um, what has happened here is that Samuel, has he was the boy prophet, remember? And he has been very righteous, but his sons are not. And the people come to him and say, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the other nations. Now what's happening here is the people are looking around and they're thinking, you know what? Everyone else has a king. We want a king too. And honestly, Saul is a little, or Samuel is a little bit worried about this, and for good reason. In 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 7, it says, And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. What is actually happening here is the people are deciding that they would rather follow popular culture, they would rather do what everyone else is doing, than follow the Lord. And it gets even worse. In 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 20, we read, That we may also be like all the nations, that our king may judge us, and go out before us, and fight our battles. Whoa, hold up. The people just finished learning time and time again that if they obeyed the Lord, he would fight their battles for them. As long as they were following the Lord, they always won. But as soon as they strayed, they lost. This is a lesson they should have learned. But just like all of us, sometimes we have to learn the same thing over and over again until it sticks. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 3, the Lord says to Saul, now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. Now what happens here is that Saul does part of what the Lord commands, but not all. He ends up killing the inhabitants, but he saves some of the animals and offers a sacrifice. In verse 24, it says, and Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned. For I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed the, their voice. Now, Saul actually ends up losing the kingdom over this. He lose the, loses the kingdom, and the Lord says it is better to obey than to sacrifice. Now, I've always wondered why this was such a big deal. But when we read this first, we understand that the reason it was such a big deal was because Saul put the opinions of the people above the commandment of the Lord. He listened to what everyone else said he should do, and that's what he did instead of what the Lord told him to do. And that is why Saul lost the kingdom. Now, Saul was a good person, and he had been a good king, but what tripped him up is what trips up so many of us, and that is that everyone else thought, Hey, Saul, this is what we should do. We should offer up a sacrifice to the Lord. That would be better. And he listened to that. He took the wisdom of the world over the wisdom of the Lord. And all of us has, have done it at one time or another. But if we keep reading in the scriptures, we're going to see the opposite example. Now, this is something I love about the scriptures. Is so many times in the Old Testament, you will see one story of what not to do 
right next to one story of what to do. And so in this way, the Lord is teaching us how we can do what he wants us to do and be happy and receive all the blessings. Now, the story of David and Goliath is the exact opposite. David is a boy who nobody thinks should be able to fight Goliath. In fact, when he goes to the camp and he realizes that this Goliath is defiling the living God and saying things against them, he has a righteous anger rise up within him. And he's like, no, someone needs to take care of this guy. And when he volunteers, everyone thinks he's crazy. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 32 and 33, it says, and David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. He says, don't worry, I'll take care of this. I can do this. And Saul said to David, thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him for thou art but a youth and he a man of war from his youth. In other words, he said, there is no way you are qualified to do this and it would be crazy. Do not do this. And that's what everyone thought. No one thought he could do this, but David didn't listen to the other people. He listened to God. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 34 through 37, it says, and David said unto Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defiled the armies of the living God. And David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go and the Lord be with thee. So many times our actions are dependent on what other people think. We're worried what other people will think. We're worried that they will judge us. And whether that is conscious or unconscious, it happens. Now, David did the exact opposite. He knew what everyone thought. He knew everyone thought he was crazy. And yet he was not afraid. He ran to Goliath to fight him because he did not fear, because he had complete trust in the Lord. In fact, in 1 Samuel 17, verses 38 through 39, it says, And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. David did not have faith in the armor. He knew he wasn't qualified to use it and he didn't know if it would work. And so he didn't want to use it. But what he did know would work was the power of God. He had no doubt in that. So he went forward without fear. Now, what I love about these two stories is they teach us a stark contrast. They teach us that when we listen to people and we put their opinions of what we should do and of what will work, above what God says, then we end up in a mess. We lose the protection of God and we don't succeed. On the other hand, when we trust God and we know that no matter what he's with us and we do what he asks, then the fear goes away and we're not so concerned about what other people think because we knew, we know who God is. We know that we're following him and he know he's got, our, we know he's got our back. And so we don't need to fear. Now, for kids, this can be a little more difficult and even for us in real life because we're not always conscious of what is happening. So there is a game I, I want to um, suggest that you play with your kids. And what it basically does is it shows them by doing what happens when they listen to the opinions of other people versus what happens when they listen to Heavenly Father and what he says. So if you haven't, if you're not already on um, signed up to get the newsletter, it's the link for that is in the description below. Make sure that you get on that and I will send you out the, it, you just print it off and it shows you how to play the game and has everything you need. So um, be sure to play that with your kids so that they can learn by doing um, how important it is to follow the Lord and how it brings us blessings and protection instead of who knows what, right? How we can trust the Lord. And that um, can just be in a little example in their minds so that when they're in those, those times and they recognize, hey, I am catching myself thinking about what other people think, they can remember to put the Lord first and that that will bring them safety and protection as they follow the Lord. Also make sure you check out Interstrike Parenting if you're not 
a member already, we learn lots of things together, whether it be how to have more motivation for you and your kids, how to overcome the obstacles that show up in your life, um, whether it be feeling overwhelmed with all the things on your schedule or having more peace and accomplishing the things that really matter in your home so that your home can be a haven during the last days. Lots of material. I upload a course every month with different video mo visual modules that you can watch when it works for you that just give you tips and insights of how to love your life, live your mission, and raise kids that do the same.